Thank you all for being here in community with us this evening. Each year, we come together to reunite with old friends and make new ones while we celebrate leaders who have gone above and beyond to build a more compassionate and inclusive community. This year, we're also marking a special anniversary, NCCJ's 85th year in the triad. Since 1937, we have served local communities by fostering understanding and respect among people of all cultures, races, and religions. One of the main ways we do our work is through programs that bring people of different identities and backgrounds together to find common ground. Since the 1960s, this annual Citation Award Dinner has been NCCJ's largest annual community program. This evening is all about celebrating and uplifting the people and the practices that are creating a more compassionate community for all of us and not just some of us. It's a chance to reaffirm our shared commitment to embrace diversity and to take action to promote inclusion and equity. It's a way to share stories about the impact of NCCJ's work, work that's made possible thanks to your support. And it's a way to tell our community, you, about the resources that NCCJ has to offer you, your family, and your friends and colleagues. Most significantly, tonight is an opportunity to celebrate the work of leaders who have dedicated their lives to the hard work of turning powerful ideas into practice. We are here to honor four leaders who have spent decades creating opportunities, expanding access, and building a community that's more inclusive and welcoming for all people. At this time, I would like to ask our 2022 Citation Award honorees to stand so that we may give them a warm greeting. Please join me in welcoming Addie and Paul Jeffrey and Linda and Tom Sloan. You will hear a lot more about the Jeffreys and the Sloans later this evening. You will also hear more from NCCJ's youth ambassadors, the young people who were visiting your tables during dinner. You will also be hearing from some of my many bosses. That's because in celebration of our 85th year, this Citation Award dinner is co-chaired by NCCJ's full board of directors. They are a hands-on group of leaders who volunteer their time, their talents, and their treasure to invest in NCCJ's work and advance our mission. I am grateful every day for their wisdom and their support. Please join me in welcoming NCCJ's Board of Directors. There are many of us.
Okay, even more. All right, well, there are many of us. So good evening, good evening. My name is Ron Milstein, and this year I have the honor of leading NCCJ's board. Thank you. We're so happy to see you all here. Together, our board reflects the diversity of our triad communities. We are black and white, Latinx and Asian. We are millennials, Gen Xers, and baby boomers. We are gay and straight, Christian and Jewish, agnostic and atheist, liberal and conservative. And just like all of you, each of us is so much more than those labels. Something we have all in common is a shared belief that our differences are something to be celebrated and not feared. Please join me in one more round of applause to thank my fellow board members for the work they do in so many ways, big and small, to sustain and nurture our organization. As board members, we provide oversight and guidance. However, NCCJ's day-to-day -day work is carried out by a small but mighty team, and let's give them a hand. If tonight is your first introduction to NCCJ, you may be asking yourself, what exactly is NCCJ? I know some of the Anytown ambassadors asked me that on the way in tonight. So we are the oldest human relations organization in North Carolina, and one with the greatest depth of experience working with young people on social justice issues. Our first 70 years, we were a local chapter of a national organization. That's why originally NCCJ was short for the National Conference of Christians and Jews. Later, after our work grew to include racial and gender equity, we became known as the National Conference for Community and Justice. Since 2005, our organization has been fully independent, and we're locally funded and operated as a nonprofit. That's why today, NCCJ stands for North Carolina for Community and Justice. We are working to build communities that are inclusive and considerate of all people, not just some people. Because when we aren't being intentionally inclusive, we run the high risk of being unintentionally exclusive. We're working to achieve greater justice. By that, I mean fairness, equality, and access for all of us, not just some of us. We do that by fighting bias, bigotry, and racism, the things that stand in opposition to community and justice. Some of our tools in this fight are love and compassion and curiosity. Instead of shutting our ears to different perspectives and experiences, we fight hate by leaning into our discomfort and listening. Listening not to respond, but to understand. And that's the only way we can truly see and hear one another. Now that's much easier said than done, isn't it? We all know that. And that's why 85 years on, we're still here. We still need NCCJ, maybe now more than ever. Like any organization, NCCJ is only as strong as the individuals who sustain and nurture it. Over the years, thousands of people have sustained and nurtured NCCJ and our mission. Many of them are no longer here. They've done their part and passed the torch to us. 
It's been a few years since we gathered like this, almost three years since the start of this pandemic that has so profoundly disrupted and reordered our lives. So I'd like to take a moment to pause and reflect on five beloved friends, all of whom are former NCCJ board members who have passed away since 2020. And they are Sharon Osment, George Johnson, Nora Carr, Randy Spivey, and Joyce Dixon. Please join me in a moment of silence for Sharon, George, Nora, Randy, and Joyce. May they rest in peace and may their memories be a blessing. So now I'm going to pass the mic to Maria and Brile so they can recognize and spotlight some of the many people who are carrying NCCJ's work forward right now. Buenas noches. My name is Maria Gonzalez, and I would like to take a moment to thank our event sponsors. Our, spon our sponsors' financial support doesn't just make this evening possible. It also makes NCCJ's work in schools and across the community possible throughout the year. Together, these people and organizations have already invested more than $300,000 to fund NCCJ's work during the year to come. Although each of these champions deserve a separate round of applause, please wait and hold your applause until everyone is being recognized. These sponsors make a big impact, but they are not the only ones who makes NCCJ work possible. If you bought a ticket for tonight's event, or made a gift of any amount, or have volunteered your time, that's an investment to NCCJ. I'm sure each of you have your own personal reasons for being here this evening. Whether you're here to celebrate our citation honorees, or you're enjoying your evening with friends and colleagues, or because you are invested in NCCJ's mission, or for all of these reasons, we thank you. 
all of you are making critical investments to further NCCJ's mission of fighting bias, bigotry, and racism. And we're working to advance, advance equity and inclusion in our community. Many of you are doing even more than that. It is becoming very clear that now, more than ever, if we truly want to live and work in a fair and inclusive community, each one of us must do whatever we can, whatever we are, to make that dream a reality. With that in mind, throughout tonight's event, we will pause to spotlight some of many people in our community who are going above and beyond to create more inclusive and equitable workplaces. Each of these DEI spotlights recognizes someone who is working within one of tonight's sponsoring organizations. Alicia Brown's contribution to Arch DNI efforts are evidenced through her steadfast leadership and dedication to the multiple groups in which she participates. From serving as president of the Black Professionals ERG to representing Arch Mortgage in the Arch Group Foundation, Alicia works to cultivate safe spaces and growth for employees while showcasing our differences. <laughs> Law partner Justin Wright says, few people I have ever worked with match Megan's dedication to accepting people for who they are. Michael DePass, Vice President for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, says Abigail brings a lifetime of navigating boundaries and differences to her work as a champion for equity, diversity, and inclusion. She uses her experience of justice, injustice, joy, love, wisdom, and curiosity to inspire encourage and influence everyone whose path she crosses. She has changed CCL for the better in many ways, and her example encourages so many of us to do the same. <laughs> CEO Chad Oakley says, Rebecca's impact at Charles Ayres cannot be overstated. Prior to Rebecca's role, Charles Ayres DEI efforts were a mere fraction of what they are today. She has done a world-class job of helping us educate ourselves, change our narrative, and take accountability towards ensuring that Charles Ayres is a model organization with diversity, equity, and inclusion at our center. We could not be prouder of how far we've come, but more importantly, how far we plan to go on our DEI journey. <laughs> Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer Nikita Green says, Together, Natalie and Demir have voluntarily facilitated numerous workshops on caring for transgender patients in our community, thereby increasing access to knowledgeable providers for a vulnerable population. They embody our promise to be right here with our community. <laughs> Tanisha Jones, the head of middle and upper school at New Garden Friends School says that Jillian, Lily, and McRae have demonstrated the importance of advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion, and justice work, and raising awareness among their peers and the community. They provide and promote a culture of equity that is inclusive and allows others to be their authentic selves without fear. Thank you to these remarkable folks and the work they are doing every day within their organizations. Let's give them all a hand. We will share more of these DEI spotlights throughout the evening, but first, we are going to pass the mic to a couple of our fellow board members. Kiva and Paul will share some highlights from NCCJ's past and our present, as well as our vision for the future. Listening to the news 
or scrolling through social media, it can feel like we're more divided than we've ever been before. It can feel that way, but it's not true. The story of our nation is also the story of a series of social and economic upheavals. NCCJ was born from one of those eras. The First World War and a global pandemic had upended social structures and systems. Workers were demanding better treatment. Women were voting. At the same time, fascist movements were on the rise. These included the Ku Klux Klan, which championed the interests of white Protestant Christians and demonized other Americans, especially black people, Jewish people, and Catholic people. Many Americans were drawn to these hateful ideas, but many were strongly opposed. NCCJ's co-founders were a broad coalition of people from many walks of life, including some folks you've probably heard of, like the social reformer Jane Addams and U.S. Supreme Court Justice Charles Evans Hughes. Their goal was to de-escalate tensions and promote tolerance by creating opportunities for respectful dialogue between different groups of Americans. In the words of historian Kevin M. Schultz, their vision was for a new kind of America. It was a pluralist vision, and it was intended to be nationally all-inclusive. This vision caught on, and NCCJ quickly became a leading organization in the growing movement to advocate tolerance. One of NCCJ's most famous early efforts was a group of three faith leaders, a minister, a rabbi, and a priest, who called themselves the Tolerance Trio. I know, I feel like I'm supposed to insert a joke there. <laughs> they make their own jokes, so hold on a second. In the early 30s, the trio would travel the country, rent out halls, and talk to audiences about the stereotypes of Jews being overly interested in money and Catholics wanting to overturn democracy. They would make jokes, and it was entertainment. People would learn how false these stereotypes were, and they would preach tolerance and mutual respect. The idea was to model how people of different faiths could encounter each other respectfully and show that these were three equal religions. It was so popular that it spawned more of these trios, which ultimately led to the creation of a National Brotherhood Day in the 1930s, time to coincide with George Washington's birthday to underscore the quote-unquote Americanness of the day. By 1936, Brotherhood Day was expanded to a week, with President Franklin D. Roosevelt as the first honorary chairman. And as a side note, the National Brotherhood Week would later evolve, evolve into an annual community events like this Brotherhood Sisterhood Citation Award Dinner. By 1941, NCCJ had established permanent local roundtables to hold community dialogues between Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish people in over 200 cities, including Greensboro, where a group of local leaders established our NCCJ in 1937. In 1941, the sociologist Alfred McClung Lee credited NCCJ with creating enough social change to help ensure that the Great Depression era did not produce an integrated, financially successful intolerance movement like the Ku Klux Klan of the post-World War I era. Instead, Lee found that NCCJ had been successful in shifting the national discourse to create what he called a mood new in the history of human relations in the United States. Of course, the past never maps directly on the present, but as the saying goes, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. I'm confident that you can connect the dots and appreciate why I chose to tell this story about NCCJ's creation and original purpose, but I'll spell it out anyway. NCCJ's approach for de-escalating tension and promoting tolerance works. That's because once you sit down with someone to have a respectful conversation and you get to know them, it becomes so much harder to hate them, to stereotype them, or to dehumanize them. When enough of us embrace a nationally all-inclusive vision, we can turn the tide away from hate and toward tolerance and compassion. I know we can do this because we've done it before.
So speaking of sitting down with folks to have a respect, respectful conversation, I'd like to lift up some of the work that NCCJ is doing right now in 2022. We are best known for working with teens, especially at Anytown, and you all got to meet some of them doing dinner. Anytown gathers a diverse group of teens to spend a week sharing, connecting, and learning to create inclusive spaces. And as we learned at our table, no phones are allowed. STAR, short for Students Talking About Race and Racism, is a three-day program where teens can ask questions and share their experiences with race and racism. We offer a shorter in-school program. Those include Break the Cycle, Be the Change, a 90-minute program that teaches students ways to identify and stop bullying. Any Day is a six-hour program that takes the conversation a step further, helping students understand the root causes of bullying and identify some ways they can make their schools more welcoming. Each spring, NCCJ convenes student delegates from high schools across the country for the Youth Leadership Conference. This peer-led conference is facilitated by NCCJ's youth ambassadors, those students that you met at dinner. I want, to, I want you to think about the teens in your life and how you can connect them with these fantastic experiences. I also want you to think about what NCCJ can do for you. We offer resources for people of all ages, from college students to retirees. I recommend starting with The Reset. It's a self-paced, email-based program to help you make time for learning, unlearning, and discovering more effective social justice habits. And if you want to practice having more effective and respectful conversations with people that you might disagree with or just are different than you, check out our Open Minds Respectful Voices Initiative. You can find more information about all these programs in the printed materials at your table and at our website, nccjtriad.org. NCCJ exists thanks to, to your investments, so it's only fair that you know what we have to offer and how you can take part. I hope you've just discovered something that piques your interest. All NCCJ programs are in service to our vision for the future, which is for every community to become a place of promise with opportunity and justice for all. Imagine that. Good evening. Everyone has a part to play in creating an inclusive community. You don't need to have a public role to play your part. You can create inclusion wherever you are, at home, at school, and in the workplace. Let's take a look at a few more of the everyday heroes who are working to create more inclusive environments within some of tonight's sponsoring organizations. Senior Vice President and Triad Region Manager, Susan Apple says, Ava has helped our firm to execute strategies focused on diversity and inclusion that have increased associate engagement and feelings of belonging. 
We recognize that many people and groups and communities face barriers. Learning more about each other and having conversations that are sometimes uncomfortable brought us all closer. We support a culture of inclusion that builds a diverse workforce so that we can support many communities we serve. This intentionality around our culture is led by individuals like Ava who are passionate about helping us to evolve. Plant leader, EK Fire Abend, we are the best team Ryan has ever worked on. We are doing great things and the business results are because of all our hard work and making a difference. <laughs> Director of Supply Network Operations, Wanda Lee, says that Lisa is a champion for the technician population in the plant. She has a finger on the pulse of the organization and provides perspective to leadership to ensure we do the right thing for everyone. <laughs> Dennis Quaintance says, over the past 16 years, starting as a server at Lucky 32, Tammy has been a beacon of purpose, kindness, fairness, energy, and notably humor. She is universally respected and admired. She ensures that our employee owners are treated fairly and that Quaintance Weaver's commitments, diversity, inclusion, and equity are brought to life. We are investigating cloning technology because Quaintance Weaver <laughs> and the world could use more Tammies. Good evening. Diversity and inclusion lead Roz Frazier says, Arnisha has a passion to be a positive light for others, a guiding role model to help individuals achieve and grow, her love for future leaders, attention to detail, and skillful planning. Catherine is passionately committed to everything she does. Catherine embodies the true spirit of advocacy and allyship never judging, leading by example, and always serving and putting others before herself. <laughs> Chief Operating Officer Rick Davenport says, Suzanne has been instrumental in bringing Samet's strategy to life ranging from innovation to culture and community. She's a natural leader who brings a new lens to our work, coupled with business savvy, commitment to the community, and a real dedication to elevating careers in construction, especially to increase representation of women in our industry. When it comes to creating positive change, there's no minimum age requirement. Many young people in our community aren't waiting until they start college or a career to make a difference. They're committing time and energy to creating the compassionate communities they want to see in their world, starting at home with their friends, and in their schools. Now it's time to hear directly from some of the young people who benefited from their participation in NCCJ's flagship youth leadership program, Anytown. For the past few weeks, they have also committed time and energy to create something to help all of us understand the impact Anytown has had in their lives. Please help me welcome Ava to the stage.
Hello, my name is Ava, and I went to Anytown last summer. In October, a bunch of us NCCJ Youth Ambassadors got together and tapped into our creative sides to make something special for you all tonight. At first, we were a little nervous. Some of us have experience with music, but most of us don't, and that left us with many questions. Like, what if I can't sing, or what if I don't play an instrument? But Maria from NCCJ brought some local artists to help us create our song. Maya guided us through some meditation, journaling, and open sharing exercises so we could think of different ways to describe our Anytown experience. Sharing memories with in special moments from the summer was empowering. It served as a reminder of this unforgettable time in our lives and showed us the power of community. In about two hours, we wrote a whole song with a chorus and everything. We couldn't believe it. Then, Jordan joined Maya to help us feel more confident with the song. Soon enough, we were adding harmonies and instruments. What we came up with was a love letter to Anytown, a letter to thank Anytown for all that it gave us and continues to give. Take a look at our process and then feel free to sing along with us on the chorus. The first part, and then the I want to make a change, and then the chorus. Okay, we could do, let's do a few more sentences and then we'll piece it together because I think we have the song. So we're writing a song about our anytime experience and how it made us feel. We were writing a song with others and us sharing the experience and writing a love letter to any town. We started the process of writing the song by just listing a whole bunch of words and short phrases to describe how we felt about any town in our session. Some of those are forgiving, loving, uh, learning, moving. That's a big one, moving. <laughs> Some of the things we're including in the song are specific emotions that any town brought out of us. We're just using a whole bunch of emotion words. Yeah, and we're just describing the experience. The song is just, I like how it flows and just like the overall message it gives. It's important to write a song cause just so you can understand like the joy and then like what we went through during Intel because it was a great experience. I think writing this song has allowed me and allowed the whole group to share what any town meant to us as an experience and what we gained from it and what we all took home with us. And for me, that's been all about love, love for myself and love for others and the love for my community that any town showed me. And now I get to give it back. So just putting those feelings out there and also seeing how other people could relate to me. Like it wasn't just me who came down the mountain feeling like I had just been like born again. And so other people could relate and that was really special. Today, we began adding instruments to the music. Hannah came in with her cello and everyone got really emotional when she started playing. So I feel like today definitely added a new level to the song. It's been awesome, you know, talking with everybody, expressing our creativity, you know, it's, a, it's an awesome time, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I thought it was going to be a few people who kind of took the lead and everybody else listened. But everybody has been able to say a little bit of something and put their own piece in, which I believe is going to make the song a lot more meaningful and more impactful to the people who listen to it.
All right, while we're uh, cleaning the stage up, let's have another round of applause for that beautiful love letter to any town. All right, it's not going to be easy uh, going after that, so here we go. Uh, my name is Peter Amidon, and Guilford County is my home. This community is vibrant. It's full of universities, colleges. It's a proud, progressive, tolerant community of neighborhoods and people of all backgrounds. But I did not appreciate this place or even understand it at first. I moved to Greensboro in 1981. I had just turned nine years old. My mom was pursuing her PhD in textiles at UNCG. 
One of the only things that we knew about Greensboro, unfortunately, at that time was the infamous Klan shooting. My parents assured me that we would move to Greensboro, get that PhD, and get the heck out of here. Well, pursuing that PhD stretched on. So we put down roots here, we started getting involved in the community, then I was invited to any town. I was actually a delegate at the first fully Greensboro-based any town way back in 1989. We did not have a problem with cell phones and not having them at any town then. That experience led me to see the power of diverse people working together for the greater good. I remember how incredible it felt to have those honest conversations with people who, based on first impressions, snap judgments, I didn't think I had much in common with me. As it turned out, we had a lot in common. I made some lifelong friends that summer. From my experience, any town doesn't turn you into a different kind of person. What it does, it gives young people opportunities to build their empathy muscles. It shows them that the way we fight intolerance is to bring intentional focus to creating the best community that we can so that our children and their children and the generations that follow will have a strong foundation to keep going and create stronger communities. I joined the NCCJ board four years ago to tap back into this Anytown energy and to ensure that NCCJ continues to do impactful work in the community. My oldest daughter, Anna, attended Anytown this past summer, and so will my other two children. Giving back to this community is a core component of who we are as a family. My wife, Michaela, recently started a nonprofit called Beyond Sports to bring sports and physical activities to Title I schools in Guilford and Forsyth counties. Through NCCJ, yep. <laughs> Through NCCJ and Beyond Sports, we are proud of this community, all that it is, and all that it can be. Well, my mom finally got her PhD. Yeah, mom. She still proudly lives in Greensboro. So does my dad, and so do I. Thank you. My name is Hilda Tajali, and I went to Anytown in 2009. For me, Anytown was life-changing. It was the first time I was around strangers who quickly became friends that were interested in learning about others beyond the surface level. As a rising junior in high school, Anytown taught me how deep conversations with peers that are different than me can be transformative. That summer, I left Anytown with a newfound appreciation for diversity in our community. Anytown completely shifted my mindset in high school, which led me to become a youth ambassador and help organize any days at Northwest Guilford High. Through my involvement, my confidence grew in sharing parts of my life as a first-generation Iranian-American living in Greensboro. My time with NCCJ helped me transition from Northwest to Chapel Hill. I had fellow Anytowners starting with me or already at UNC as a strong foundation for my time as a Tar Heel. Throughout college, I continued my involvement with diversity and inclusion through student-led organizations and as a counselor at Anytown during the summers. After graduating from UNC, I lived and worked in Washington, D.C. for a few years until I decided it was time to move back to Greensboro, the place that made me who I am today. I was eager to make an impact in my community, and of course, I immediately called NCCJ. I was lucky enough to serve as an Anytown advisor that summer. Now, with my career in real estate, I'm even more aware of how I can help support community development. Anytown helped me find my strong sense of compassion, curiosity, and now I'm drawn to understanding others and their stories. We all have something to share and learn from each other. My experience at Anytown as a delegate, counselor, and advisor taught me that we all have more similarities than differences. As a board member of NCCJ, I am eager to help continue to provide these life-changing experiences for future generations. Now, more than ever, it's essential that we shine a bright light on those similarities rather than the differences and continue the fight for human rights and equality everywhere. Less than 50 years ago, in my parents' homeland of Iran, 
They lived in a free country before an extremist Islamic regime used morality as a tool and weapon against innocent people. In Iran right now, women are at the forefront of the human rights movement. Zan Zendegi Azadi, women, life, freedom, is a universal slogan. And we are fighting for the same freedoms in our country here today, as we are seeing reproductive rights, among other matters, being controlled by our government. I hope that each of you look around this room tonight and recognize our shared humanity and the reason that we are here. We must work together for a common cause, community and justice. Good evening, my name is Megan Callahan. I went to Anytown in 1995. At the time, my father was a coach and teacher at Dudley High School and was there for about 25 years. I was raised at Dudley, always running around. I was a little gym rat running around over there. But I grew up in Old Irving Park, and I went to school at Page and played basketball and volleyball there. When I went to any town, all the dots got connected for me with social justice and injustices and how we all need each other, how we are all more alike than we are different. This community is so small, and it's so well connected. There are so many faces in this room from every phase of my life, whether it's someone who worked with my mother at UNCG, someone who's been in the junior league with myself or my mother, someone who's on the school board or a member of the local judicial district. Everyone in this room is so closely connected, whether you know it or not. It's amazing. And what I learned at Anytown is we all can make a change in this community. I'm an attorney now. After Anytown, I took about a nine or 10 year hiatus before I went back as an advisor and then became an Anytown co-director for many years. Now I'm on the NCCJ, I'm a board member. All of these phases with NCCJ have been the best experience. NCCJ has given so much to my life that I want to give back to it and the kids who have gone over the years and the kids who will go in the years to come. NCCJ in any town changed me and I've seen how it changes other young men and women in, in our community. Whether you're an attorney like me an investment banker or a real estate agent, any career or profession that we have present here tonight, fighting for social injustice, social justice and inclusion makes our business and our community better. Even if that's not the mission of your job, it makes us better. As an attorney, I see fighting injustice as the mission of my life. I used to tell the students at any town, at the end of the week. I will stand with you to fight injustice. I will work with you and I am here for you. That's how I treat my clients. That's how I relate to my coworkers and my friends. That's how we all should relate to one another and work together. This organization is not only key to our students, it's key to professionals to get involved, to see the change to bring the change. This organization has touched my heart and I just hope and pray that it can touch your heart and your kids' heart as much as it's done for me. If you feel inspired by what you've seen and heard this evening, my hope is that you'll commit or recommit to investing in NCCJ and joining us in this work. Your gift is essential to sustaining and growing NCCJ's work and the wonderful programs you've heard so much about this evening. I see it as an investment in our collective future. We cannot control the world, but what we can control is our actions and our contributions in it. This year, we set a goal of raising 
370,000 at the event. That's about one third of the funds that NCCJ needs to keep serving our community throughout the year. Thanks to the generosity of our sponsors and those of you who purchased tickets or made donations, we've already raised $310,000. Please stand with me, our board, and our community. I'm asking you to help meet our goal by raising another $60,000 tonight. I'll start by pledging my own gift of $1,000, because I have the capacity to do that. Ask yourself, what is your capacity? Remember that you don't need to make your whole gift tonight. You can also set up monthly donations to make your gift more manageable. If you're a sponsor or you bought tickets, thank you. Consider digging a little deeper if you can. And if you are here as someone's guest, I hope we've touched your heart here tonight and you will choose to invest in our work. If you're in the ballroom, you have a donation card at your seat inside of an envelope. Filling out this card is one way to make your gift to support NCCJ's work. It looks like this. Take a moment now to locate and read it at your table. It's tucked in with an envelope. As you can see on the back, you have a few options for making your gift. NCCJ's youth ambassadors, there's a lot of them, are going to come through the room to pick up your completed cards and donations. Just raise your hand or wave your envelope in the air when you're ready for them to pick those up. Tonight, Everyone who makes a gift will be entered into drawings for four door prizes. That includes folks who give online or make pledges. First, everyone who makes a gift in any amount will be entered into a drawing for a $100 gift card for Visual Index, an art gallery and gift shop in Winston-Salem. Next, everyone who makes a gift in any amount will also be entered into a drawing for a four ticket VIP package for a UNCG men's basketball game of your choice. If you make a gift of $100 or more, you'll be entered into a drawing for four seats at one of Gia's monthly chef's table dinners. And if you make a gift of $100 or more, you'll be entered into a drawing for a Sunday brunch for 10 at 1618 West. I'm excited. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> Finally, even if you aren't making a gift tonight, we would love to stay in touch with you. So everyone who fills out the card on the front with their name and email, so we can stay in touch, will be entered into a drawing to win an NCCJ gift basket. It's full of items that will help you explore some of the triad's civil rights history and connect with a few of the many Black-owned businesses in our community. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for taking time to consider our request, and I hope you choose to stay connected with, N with NCCJ. Thanks.
All right, so I'll do this. Can you see? Is that good enough for you? Mm-hmm. All right, thank you for taking the time to consider our request and make such generous gifts. If you haven't already made your gift, it's not too late. You can still make your gift online, by text, or at the credit card processing station by the exit at the end of the evening. I also want to thank the NCCJ Youth Ambassadors again for sharing that beautiful song and for volunteering their time to be with us here tonight. Now, it's time for tonight's final DEI spotlights as we recognize a few more folks for the work they're doing to advance equitable and inclusive policies and practices in their organizations. Tanger's Executive Vice President and General Counsel Chad Perry says, Josh has been a catalyst and a leader for DEI transformation within our organization. He embodies the company's mission, vision, and values through his dedicated commitment to DEI in all forms. Under his leadership, Tanger has become a company that is actively engaged in working to ensure inclusion and equity for all our people, our shoppers, and our stakeholders. <laughs> Reed Phillips, the firm's managing partner, says that Brooks Pierce has long been dedicated to improving diversity and inclusion efforts not just in our firm, but in the wider communities we serve. We are glad that Justin has graciously chosen to focus more of his time and the firm's resources on making sure our initiatives have a real and lasting impact. <laughs> Kathy Akins, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, says, we are so proud of the work Gus Pena is doing at UNC Greensboro and in our community to amplify the importance of equity. As an educator, Pena is leading UNCG's work in educating students about diversity and inclusion, building bridges and opportunities for students who come from minoritized communities and offering direct support and advocacy for all students. Steve Fleming, CEO of the Wellspring Group and board chair for Pace of the Triad, says that Ursula is not only a well-respected aging services professional, but a champion for DEI efforts in her own organization at Wellspring and across the aging services world. She embodies the spirit of inclusivity through her actions, training sessions, and leadership style. Ursula makes everyone feel welcome, respected, heard, and important. Besides all, all of that, she and her husband, Ralph, are just great people that we are fortunate enough to have as professional colleagues and friends. Riot for Change founder, Kiva Elliott, says Reagan Seek is a true ally and advocate for helping Amar create a more inclusive and equitable culture. Her tenacity and authenticity shines brightly, which empowers others to do the same. <laughs> Board Chair Adriana Adams says, Jose is an asset to Faith Action International the immigrant and refugee community, and the community as a whole. He works tirelessly to ensure that immigrants and refugees in our community will be welcomed, served, and at home. We are happy to honor his years of service and welcome his new leadership role at Faith Action.
Let's have a round of applause for all of the people who celebrated tonight with DEI Spotlights. Now is the moment I know many of you have been waiting for all evening. It's time to induct four more people into an extraordinary group of leaders. NCJ's Citation Award honorees. First, let's take a look at our past honorees. Over the years, NCJ has presented the Citation Award to many deserving people. This award honors their efforts to live our mission by building communities free of bias, bigotry, and racism. We have celebrated heroes from all walks of life, people of different races, and ethnicities, religions, gender identities, and sexual orientation. One thing they have in common is that they spend their lives striving for equity, inclusion, and justice, working day in and day out to live values that NCJ shares. Our community is a better place for having them. Thank you to all of our past honorees and our current honorees for your tireless efforts. And to all future honorees, thank you for the work you do every day to make our community a better place for us all to live, not just some of us. The newest Citation Award honoree carries on this legacy of leadership. We honor them tonight for their many years of dedicated work to build a compassionate and inclusive community. Let's take a look at Paul and Addie Jeffries. They are change makers to expand access and advance equity for all people. Let's hear it from some people who have worked closely with Addie and Paul. And so Addie and Paul, they come from a humble background of the families, uh, middle class families, working class families. And so they realize that um, they have a voice here and they have the responsibility to raise that voice. Addie is very powerful and she takes initiative. Not only will she hear about something and say, okay, now I know it. It's now I know it, now what can I do about it? Addie, back in 2011, she, she ended up getting breast cancer. She had to have chemo, and she had to have radiation, and she had to have surgery. And uh, she said, how, how could it be that the mammogram didn't show? I'm getting mammograms every year. So she went back to the radiologists, who are extremely competent and were doing state-of-the-art work, and she said, you know, you really ought to tell your patient if they have dense breasts, it's not sensitive. The mammogram is not very good. Oh, we can't do that. It, it will make everybody extremely anxious. And, and besides, what, are, what can we do? I mean, all we have is mammography. That's really the only thing we have. She didn't like that answer. She went to Raleigh, she lobbied. Two years later, the legislature in North Carolina passed a law, the breast density law. After that law, every mammographer in North Carolina, every time they have a mammogram, have to state what the density is and that it means if it's dense, it's not very sensitive. Because of that, you know, my mother, you know, recently she just got a mammogram and she's getting more diagnoses done because of that law that Addie supported and passed. 
So all that to say is that Addie really cares about the community. The effect of that on patients is incalculable. I cannot tell you how many patients will have had their cancers found when they're smaller, when they don't need chemo, when they need less surgery, maybe not even radiation. So this is just great. When they see legal trees, when they see that there is no a fair uh, treatment to some populations, they, they take action. Paul influenced and orchestrated an apology to Dr. Alvin Blunt, uh, who uh, was one of the plaintiffs uh, in the Moses the Simpkins versus Moses Cone uh, hospital case. And that really let me understand that Cone Health was serious about uh, inclusion and diversity and equity. That was inclusion. That was including everybody in the community and letting them know that this was the past and that the health system was acknowledging the past, apologizing for it, couldn't fix it, but wanted to let folks know that a change was going to take place. He touched a community that had a wound that really we thought was healed, but hadn't been healed. And this actually helped a lot. When they see an issue that is affecting the immigrant community, they will dig a little more farther and find the facts and try to find solutions. It was this issue, once again, of education that she got heavily involved with. And ever since then, you know, we've been, we, we've been at this fight for many, many years. And we've introduced legislation at the North Carolina General Assembly for in-state tuition for many, many years. It's been over a decade, probably two now. And for Addie, this is a fight that's going to keep going until it is solved. I think what re really motivates Addie is seeing other people like her succeed, um, really acknowledging that it's not going to take one person in the Latino community to fix all the problems, but creating a community of people who are empowered to do that. Paul is not in your face. He is, has a personality that's uh, very warm. He's approachable. He listens. And then he's, he's a great team builder in terms of bringing people together to solve problems. Getting representative populations involved in the discussions that take place within health system, that's inclusion. And that's what Paul was about in trying to increase diversity and inclusion. You don't just want someone at the table. You want them to be feel part of the discussion and to have an impact. And that was Paul's role at Cone Health. And he did that very effectively. He does this naturally. Nobody had to make him an inclusion officer for him to be an inclusion officer. He has been an inclusion officer for the last 20 years. He just didn't have the title. I often think about where do I see myself in the next couple of years? And as long as it's somewhere in the vicinity of what Addie does, I'm okay with that. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Paul Anthony Jeffrey. Y yo soy hijo de inmigrantes de la isla de San Martín, Santa Cruz, y fui nacido en la isla de Puerto Rico. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Adi Jeffrey y soy hija uh, de inmigrantes de la isla de Cuba y yo fui nacida en Nueva York, en los Estados Unidos. We are deeply grateful for this distinguished recognition from NCCJ. We want to thank Ivan and the board of directors of NCCJ and the community members that took the time to think of us and nominate us for this special recognition. It's a full circle moment for us because we remember when we first moved to Greensboro that Linda Sloan was one of the first people that made us feel welcome in this community. So it's especially touching for us. In 2004, when Paul was going through the interview process with Cone Health, one of the folks asked him if he had any concerns or any hesitations if he was asked to join the Cone leadership team. And he shared something that was of a personal nature. We were concerned about moving from a big city like Miami to a smaller city like Greensboro because we have three children but specifically our son, Polly, is differently abled. That he um, go and visit and tour 
a public school called Gateway Education Center. And I'll never forget, he called me on his way to the airport and said, you know what, even if I don't get the job, we're moving to Greensboro because he thought it was the most magnificent place that our son could ever be at. NCCJ is an organization that is very close to our heart. We have each volunteered over the years in many ways because we believe in NCCJ's mission. For many years, I served on the board of directors and Addy volunteered to spend a week in the mountains and served as a counselor at any town. Our eldest daughter also had the opportunity to attend any town when she was a senior in high school. She came back a different person after attending any town. The issues that Paul and I have worked on together and also separately have been at times difficult, time consuming, mentally draining, mind boggling and everything in between. But they're issues that are important to us. A while back, a very close friend of ours, Whitney Vanderwerf, shared this quote from Vaclav Havel. The quote is, hope is an ability to work for something because it is good, not just because it stands a chance to succeed. It's not the conviction that something will turn out well, but the certainty that something makes sense regardless of how it turns out. It is also this hope that gives us the strength to live and continually try new things. So again, it is with much gratitude and humbleness that we accept this distinguished award. It is an honor to know we are being recognized together with Linda and Tom Sloan and having the knowledge of all those who were recognized in the past 55 years. So we hope that everyone here tonight and so many of our friends and family that we hope are watching at home will take the time to support NCCJ's work so it can continue far into the future. Thank you. Thank you. We will bring Addie and Paul up to the stage in a few minutes. But first, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our second set of honorees, Linda and Tom Sloan. Linda and Tom Sloan are bridge builders and opportunity makers. Let's hear from some of the people who have worked closely with Linda and Tom over the years. I am so thrilled that Linda and Tom Sloan are being honored in this way. These people light up a room. They are welcoming. They are genuine. You can tell their commitment is sincere to making this community a better place. Tom and Linda Sloan are incredibly compassionate and compelling individuals. They really have sparkles that make them shine in both their eyes and in their hearts and in their souls. I think Tom and Linda have long had a value of creating a community for everyone here and investing in projects and organizations that they think have the power to do that. This kind of philanthropy is in somebody's heart. Their belief in community, their sense of obligation and giving back to that community, I think is at, it's what's at their core. That is the ideological basis for everything I've seen my friends Tom and Linda do for the past 27 years. Build a strong Jewish community, but make sure that in doing so, we don't forget the greater community and we re reach out both in the arts and, and in social service agencies and, and whatever to really try to, to make a difference, to make this community as a whole, and I would say the world, a better place. Tom and Linda are a perfect complement to each other. Linda, you know exactly where she stands. She's gonna tell you what she thinks and what she feels, and I love that attribute about Linda. And that's, I think that's why we get along so well, because we can really speak honestly with each other. And Tom has this gracefulness to him. He will not hold back for what he's thinking, but he will kind of say it in a very polite manner that, that lets you know whether you're right or whether you're wrong. Tom and Linda, uh, Linda currently serving on the board, Tom having done so and shared in the past, there's one word that I would use, 
and that's incisiveness. They both understand or know how to get under the hood of an issue or a problem and probe, but in a very productive way. In the aftermath of the Pittsburgh shooting, where there were um, 11 Jews killed at the Tree of Life synagogue, but we opened up the doors here and had a memorial service, an interfaith memorial service. 2,000 people came here. It's the largest group that ever came to Temple Emmanuel in its over 100 year history. And I'm telling you right now that if it hadn't been for the vision of Tom and Linda in terms of doing this building and trying to say this is where the congregation, it's not just the building, it's what's gonna happen. It's a, that would have never happened or been able to happen. Linda was one of four uh, amazing women who came together to start the Women to Women Endowment at the Community Foundation of Greater Greensboro. When you think of Linda's influence on this community, you can see her fingerprints in a lot of places. And I do see her fingerprints indelibly present in the Women to Women Endowment. It is continuing in its quest to be a transformative resource for Greensboro. And she's still right there with it. Two years ago, I guess, they started the Sloan Scholars Program, which gives high achieving students who are in financial need for rides, it, you know, so it's both a commitment of time and treasure, and it's what you want from board members. Education is critically important for the economic of, development of our community and really spans all sectors of the community at the same time. So I'm not surprised that Tom and Linda over the years have selected to put education at the top of their list, and we're truly appreciative of that. The Chess and Schools is a great example. There were many trials and many stops and starts that were very frustrating, but Tom had the humility to kind of carry that forward. He worked with multiple folks at the Guilford County Schools. Our staff was able to kind of help navigate a lot of the different issues that were going on. But it was Tom's persistence and his constant sincerity about this is definitely the right thing to do. We're preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist. But what we do know is what business leaders tell us. They tell us that they need competent, critical thinkers to join the workforce who are ready to enter college and the careers of their choice. And so when we invest in strategic thinking as young as second grade, like Tom and Linda have done in their support of the CHESS program, we're really investing in the future of our workforce. Well, I think the arts are so important to Tom and Linda because they understand the value that that brings to our community and in so many different ways, um, culturally, but also uh, economically, and they believe in that power. The arts are what make us human and what make us memorable for generations to come. Linda knows that and she wants to be a part of it. She shares her love of theater, her love of bringing the arts into our world to understand different worlds and different cultures. And she herself is a great artist in terms of the theatrical world. She loves it. It's a passion. And when you love something, you want to support it. You want to make it happen. You want others to be able to have the opportunity to love it as well. Linda and Tom Sloan have been so integral to the success of Triad Stage. and doing that, ensuring that success in many ways. Certainly their financial support has been overwhelming and so beneficial, but they also help lead in strategic thinking. And they also, you know, get right in there and, and do the hard work. They believe in the wholeness of each individual and the uniqueness of each person. And that is how they live their lives, both as leaders in the community, as individuals who live in our community, as builders of our community. Tom and Linda are are unique and wonderful human beings. These are really special people. You know, there's incredibly special people. This is a very special night for the Sloan family, and we have many of our clan here with us tonight. We want to thank them for being here. They have always been our motivation, our audience, and the ones who have made all of our work fun. We thank you all for coming out to celebrate NCCJ's long-term contributions to our community. Greensboro is a special place where anyone can make a difference by applying their motivation, talent, and energy in making our city ever better. Charitable funds are always useful, but not required. 
Linda and I have chosen to focus much of our attention in the areas of education, the arts, social services, and the Jewish community. Greensboro is fortunate to have a very strong group of nonprofit organizations that are enriching our collective lives. The professional leaders of these entities dedicate themselves to making our community more healthy, more educated, more aware, and more caring of those who may need support. The volunteer boards who guide these entities play a vital part in offering advice, future planning, and support to their missions. When I look at Guilford County today, I am proud of the recent community investment to rebuild our public school building. And speaking about schools, I'm excited about our latest effort to teach second graders how to play chess and to learn to think more strategically. We now have 1,200 kids in 16 schools in the Guilford School Chess Program. I am also proud of the growth of our colleges and universities who have, are known for creating futures and social mobility for our young citizens. But there is much more to do as we reach out more broadly to include those struggling for safety, jobs, and economic success. Tom grew up in Greensboro. And as a married couple, we have lived here for 52 years. We have seen a lot of change. We have seen Greensboro's growth plus its potential. And we hope to see our community continue to build new programs as it strives for excellence. We love this community. And the interactions we have had with everyone we have worked with have shaped and enriched our lives. When I was in my 30s, after all three of my children were born, I made the decision to get a degree in theater. I had found my passion. Consequently, I love the years of relationships with students, some of whom make a living in theater today, and some, I hope, just enjoy being an audience of theater. And Triad Stage became a part of my teaching. I am honored that Rich Whittington, one of its founders, is here tonight. So, with a strong foundation from previous generations, NCCJ has been a great catalyst for diversity and inclusion. Whether in the arts or in social services, in our various faiths or in health and welfare, we thank our community and organizations like NCCJ for seeing our needs and our possibilities. Thank you, NCCJ. We feel deeply honored. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maria Perdomo, and I am NCCJ's Assistant Program Director. Y soy una orgullosa Latina. Acompáñenme a felicitar a nuestros homenajeados desde 2022 aquí en el escenario. Adi y Paul Jeffrey, y Linda y Tom Sloan. Everyone, please join me in welcoming our 2022 Citation Award honorees to the stage. Addie and Paul Jeffrey, and Linda and Thompson.
Good evening, my name is Mona Edwards, and Citation Award dinner guests, thank you again for joining us this evening. To our 2022 Brotherhood Sisterhood Citation Award honorees, Addie and Paul Jeffrey, and Linda and Tom Sloan, congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Thank you for being such an inspiration to all of us, for your dedication to enriching our communities and leading us toward a more inclusive and equitable future. Let's have another round of applause for our honorees. And now I have some very good news to share with you all. Tonight, we just raised and gave more than $76,358 to invest in NCCJ's work to fight bias, bigotry, and racism. Thanks to the extraordinary generosity of all of you in this room, and everyone joining us on the live stream. This also means that we've met our overall goal, including what you've given here tonight. This event has raised a total of $391,249 to support NCCJ's work. Thank you, thank you. And if you haven't yet made your gift, I encourage you to donate in support of NCCJ's mission 
and work to create a more inclusive community so that we can have an even greater reach and impact. Thanks again for your presence this evening, both in person and for what you have contributed tonight and those of you online. We are grateful for your generous support and belief in NCCJ's mission. Please join me in giving you a round of applause. And I'm Jennifer Martineau. I have the pleasure of announcing this evening's door prize winners. Ready? The winner of the NCCJ gift basket is Jennifer Noble. Jennifer Noble? If people are not here, we'll, we'll get your gifts to you. If you are here, you can pick them up at the uh, front of the stage uh, at the end of the evening. So Jennifer Noble has the NCCJ gift basket. The winner of a $100 uh, gift card to the Visual Index Gallery is Lisa Pickett Crawford. Lisa? The winner of UNCG's four-ticket basketball package is Kristen Kubli. Way to go, Kristen. That'll be fun. The winner of the four seats at one of Gia's monthly chef table dinners is Kent Aubrey and Deborah Hayes. And then finally, the winner of a Sunday brunch for 10 people at 1618 West is Sam Wagner. <laughs> Sam just found nine other people to go with him. <laughs> Winners, as you're, if you're watching virtually, NCCJ will contact you within the next week to arrange pickup or delivery of your prize. If you're in the room tonight, as I said, come to the table beside the stage to collect your prize before you leave. Thank you all for joining us this evening to celebrate our inspiring honorees and reaffirm your commitment to the vital work of building a more inclusive and equitable community for all of us, not just some of us. Now, finally, it's my pleasure to introduce Nyla Fazi. Nyla is the Associate Chaplain for Muslim Life at Wake Forest University, and she will give our closing prayer. Nyla. Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon you all. I'm honored to be here with all of you this evening, and I'd like to end our time together by reflecting on the lasting impact of our honorees' contributions to society. In Islam, there's a concept called sadqa jariya, which essentially means acts of perpetual service and charity. It's the long-term impact that one's giving can have beyond its initial benefit. There's a prophetic narration in our tradition of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he said, when a person dies, all of their good deeds come to an end, except three, righteous children and the good works they do in the world, beneficial knowledge that one has disseminated to others, and sadqa jariya, a perpetual charity. It's evident that our honorees this evening have engaged in giving to communities which will have positive reverberations for generations to come. As we end this evening together, we ask that our contributions and good works are also elevated to the level of sadqa jariya, that they have a lasting impact on the lives of those around us today and those that will come tomorrow. We ask that our hands continue to be guided towards equitable justice and peace, and that we have the courage to stand alongside those whose voices need to be elevated. 
illuminate our minds so that we are conscious of our responsibility to serve. May that consciousness lead us to hold ourselves accountable for our actions, soften our hearts with love, compassion, and empathy for all who cross our paths. We ask for ease as we embrace our role of being stewards of the earth. We show gratitude for the connections that have brought us all together. May we spread tranquility and humility as we go with peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.